Hi, investigators. Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy with this week's update on what's been happening in the private investigation industry in Australia. Well, today we have launched our assistance for regulatory compliance officers who regulate private investigators all around Australia. So we've created a video series that are going to help them in um, understanding what private investigators actually do. This week's episode is about when investigators go rogue and it includes examples of police officers and private investigators that did the wrong thing. Their main motivators were sex, drugs and money. And if you would like to see what that's all about in relation to our help for uh, regulatory authorities, jump over to my YouTube channel. It's uh, Michael Evans. This is what it looks like. Just tile in Michael Evans, private investigator, and you'll see the full five minute video of that program on YouTube. So that will become uh, quite a regular thing. And it's to help regulatory uh, authorities understand the work of a licensed private investigator and how they look at things. In, also in the news this week, ProCare are looking for an operations manager. Now, you type in to seek ProCare and operations manager and that job vacancy will come up. So ProCare is a very large Australia-wide investigation agency. They um, have workers' compensation and liability investigations. So if you're looking at being a, a coordinator of investigators, there's a great opportunity there at ProCare. In another vacancy that's on this week, that you'll see that came out on SEEK today, Clarity Workplace Solutions are looking for licensed private investigators. Now, again, you can see that job on SEEK or if you join my Facebook job vacancies page, which just has jobs vacancies on it, there's no silliness, there's no can't play well with others on that page. Anyone that does that's deleted. So you'll be able to see Clarity Workplace Investigations uh, job vacancy on that page as well. One of the things that I like to share with people is what private investigators use. And this week we're looking at Global Data's CASPA database. The database put up by CASPA, and they're based in Melbourne, it's a really fantastic database. If you're looking to locate witnesses or locate debtors, you subscribe to this database, you won't go wrong. So if you're looking for that, um, the contact is below. You can contact Vlad and he will come and uh, explain to you all about how Casper works and how it can benefit your organisation and how much it costs. It's surprisingly very affordable. So Vlad's a very accommodating salesperson and he's the manager of the organisation. Get in touch with Vlad. Tell him I sent you. As you saw earlier in um, this presentation, we were looking at uh, helping investigation regu regulators understand the investigation industry. And there was a few examples through during that video of investigators that went rogue. One actually committed murder. One actually um, got police to give him information. So, you know, it happens in every industry. I'm sure it happens in carpet laying, travel industry. There's, there are people that do the wrong thing. One of the more interesting ones in Australia and probably one of the most explosive at the time happened in 2012 and it went to the Supreme Court. And in this case, a private investigator had absolutely gone rogue. He had interviewed a claimant um, some months earlier and then later on he noticed that the claimant was on one of um, the internet um, sites such as Tinder, that sort of thing. Now, the claimant was married. Now, the private investigator saw this and <laughs> stupidly the private investigator using a false identity started to extort money and blackmail that person. He was actually able to extort $26,000 from that person and that person didn't know it was a private investigator that had um, met with him and taken a statement from him some months earlier. Now, the only reason they found this out was they engaged a firm called Lionswood Investigations to find out what was going on. The police couldn't 
go fast enough on this as it had to, so Lionswood did. They instituted um, searches, they located IP addresses, and they found out where the extortionist actually was. So they were able to take out Anton Pillar orders, get the digital evidence required to um, get a conviction in the court against Steve Murray, the investigator, doing the wrong thing. Now, you can read about it on the internet, uh, just top, uh, do a search for it, and it'll tell you all about how the extortionist went about it. And, and the resulting court um, result from it was he had to pay back the $26,600, plus he was also fined $20,000 and he had to pay the costs as well. So there, there are some investigators that don't do the right thing. That's not just limited to private investigators. It happens all around different organisations. Now, last week, I was able to, uh, for the first time ever, actually show you a, a, a movie or part of a movie that I recommend all private investigators should watch. And that movie last week was called Detective Downs. Now, if you've had an opportunity to watch that, it was a really good movie, uh, really uplifting movie um, and very entertaining, made in Denmark, so um, quite crazy. Uh, it has subtitles, but really good movie. And if you're a private investigator, it had a special element in it in relation to basically the investigator having his own method. And that method in that movie was he would actually become the person who was missing and look for them and live their life. And that was the way he found people, which was a pretty clever way of doing it. And basically, a uh, great movie. This week, the movie I'd um, like you to have a look at and go for a, um, uh, a bit of a search on the internet is a movie made in Queensland and it's called Getting Square. It stars David Wenham. Now, if you get a chance to get that movie, it's about the Criminal Misconduct Commission and how they go about doing things. So uh, really great movie if you get a chance to see Getting Square. Um, there's a lot of swearing, a heck of a lot of swearing, but it goes through some of the methods that the um, criminal misconduct you use to investigate. They've got listening devices and they've got these techniques of isolation before an interview, that sort of thing. So really um, entertaining movie, um, but I, I must warn you about a swearing. It has uh, Joe Bugner in it. Joe Bugner, uh, if you don't know, was the only boxer in the world to go 12 rounds with Muhammad Ali twice. So um, he turned into an actor. He lives in Brisbane today um, and he plays one of the bad guys in that movie. So it's been, once again, a very busy week within um, private investigations. There's job vacancies, certainly good job vacancies around the country. Um, if you're not up to speed with those job vacancies, get on my Facebook job vacancy page. Um, if you don't know where that is, just send me a message and I will um, link you up with that. So that's all we've got time for this week. And basically, I look forward to seeing you next week when we look at our second episode of assistance for uh, private investigators. And we have a third must-watch movie for investigators, um, which is quite interesting. Now, that must-watch movie is about the biggest civil investigation case in world history. And we'll talk about that next week. Until then, I'm Mike Evans from the Australian Security Academy.